So uh, my name is Ricardo, and I write software at OpenFin. And tonight, I'm talking about optimizing applications for startup time and response times. Now, I know what you're thinking. You should have grabbed another drink. But <laughs> rest assured, they only gave me 10 minutes. Um, so I'm going to set the stage. Um, so you're part of a development team. You're working on this web application, and you're simply outgrowing the web. Um, you know, you want more control. You want more interoperability. Basically, you want to build experiences that modern browsers just don't allow. Um, I mean, I get it. We've been there, for sure. Um, and so has Microsoft, Slack, GitHub, and quite a few FinJS participants. Now, you don't, you don't want to throw out all your code, right? It's painful going from WPF. You don't want to throw it away from web to web. Um, so you need to pick a tech stack, right? Now, you made a wise choice. You pick OpenFin. You go to our getting started docs. And I'm going to fast forward because we're going to have a really good talk right afterwards. So let's just assume that you know how to do this. Um, and you actually, if you have any questions, like we have a webinar that's recorded. It's five minutes. So it's super, super simple to get an actual application that has desktop you know, like functionality. So fast forward, you've crunched, you've gotten your website you know, built into a desktop application. You've built the experience. Your users are going to love it. Oh, well, I guess that's you know, maybe tough love, but love nonetheless. Um, but what does that even mean? It feels slow. You've just deployed this thing. It was running the same code that you've been running on the browser. So what does that even mean? How could it be slow? Is the environment slow? Is, are there computers slower? Um, actually, there's quite a bit of research on just what slow means, right? So humans have been interacting with computers for a while. People are interested in this. This happens to be a chart from the Google Rails performance model, but we could have used the, like, the Norman model from the 60s and basically maps the same way. Um, so let's go through this, right? So we need to understand what slow really means, right? So zero to 100 milliseconds um, seems to be the sweet spot for interaction, right? Users feel that this is immediate. 100 milliseconds to 300 milliseconds, start to see a perceptible delay, but should be fine. 300 milliseconds to a second is natural, as long as the user is associating that with a task, like navigation or maybe creating a child window, something like that. And then beyond 100 milliseconds, user starts to lose focus, and then they might you know, play Sudoku or go to your computer competing app. Um, so let's see where we're at. Right? Users were complaining, planning this was slow. Let's see. So I should have, uh, this is going to be tricky. All right. So let's to pay no mind to the logos. This is your application. Um, and this is your first iteration. Huh. Oh, well, that's not good. And um, let's create a child window here. Ugh. Yeah. We're definitely in the Sudoku area here. So we basically are a minute and a half, sort of. So that's not good, right? Users are not really happy, as they've already described. Um, but in the data, there's, there's, there's good news, right? So we're basically showing the window after it's been loaded. Now, that's not necessarily how the web works, right? If we ever waited for Amazon to finally load, it takes about 12 seconds. But above the fold, it's almost immediate, right? So we want some above the fold action for our application, right? We want to be as responsive as we can. 
um, in that sweet spot. So let's go back. So we troll through the OpenFin docs and find uh, wait for page load, which sounds like it would just do the things that we want it to do. Um, so basically, we want to be above the fold, right? We want to react as quiz quickly as we can. I should stop snapping. Um, react as quickly as we can. Um, and you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. I'm going to fast forward through a few other development um, changes that I made, uh, you made, in your second iteration. And that's like adding just a little loading screen, uh, not loading screen, loading text. So let's see what the second iteration looks like. Oh, so we got immediate reaction. So we're keeping our users engaged. Now, it still takes you know, second and a half to load, but hey, you know, we're getting interaction. So uh, yeah, maybe the, the Wi-Fi is bad here. I think this is a uh, successful iteration. And uh, whoops, I think they're gonna love it. Ooh, doesn't work offline. Well, the web doesn't work offline, right? Like, that's the whole point, right? We took something that worked in the web and we shipped it. So, like, it seems like someone has some misconceptions. It kind of feels like the users just completely changed their expectations because we shipped a desktop application. Wait, as I said that, kind of rings true, right? You wouldn't expect Outlook to sort of crap out or Excel to sort of stop working because you're walking to a conference room or you know coding on the train. If only there was a way to cache all your code offline. Well, looks like there is. So service workers, um, closest thing to a JavaScript Swiss Army knife, um, but just gonna, for brevity, just focus on the the ability to store your application code locally. So it serves as an offline cache. Um, I know it seems daunting, like a completely new API, but the folks at Mozilla has, have made this super, super easy. Um, there's tons of documentation. There's a cookbook with recipes. Now, I'm not going to talk through the code. This is not that kind of presentation, um, but just want to point out, this is one of the recipes. And I literally did no changes. Or wait, you did no changes to your application code. Um, and just want to point out that that line of code where you're listing your files, you can, you can prefetch files that you know you're going to need. So you can sort of hydrate that offline cache, making it that so on your first launch of any window, now your offline cache has been hydrated and the in, your entirety of your app can just run um, from the local cache, which is something very, very powerful. Cool, so we've implemented these changes. Now let's see how it goes. So, you know, we were at a, you know, at the interaction sweet, spo sweet spot for uh, window shown, but, you know, we're still losing some users. So now this is a uh, service worker enabled iteration of over the same code. Ooh, times seem to work for us. So 300 milliseconds for main window loaded. This is a hydrated cache, obviously. Uh, but if we create a child window, we get similar times, um, which is pretty, pretty, pretty good. Um, so I think we ship this. They're going to absolutely love it. Oh, and this time, yes. <laughs> um, obviously, this is a much larger conversation, right? Um, I've got 18 seconds to go. Um, you know, if you want to talk about performance, if you want to talk about the things that you need to do to match your users' ex expectations now that you own a desktop 
applications, uh, application. OpenFin's booth is over there. Anyone with an OpenFin card is happy to talk to you, happy to uh, take this conversation over, and uh, I'm out of time.